Good afternoon, everyone. We've seen the fire in Notre Dame Cathedral. Let's talk about the medieval warming period when that construction was started. 12th century. Then again, the height of mathematics, agriculture, society at that time collapsed into the French Revolution. What happened? Well, they couldn't grow food. Take a look at some of the European temperatures as well as food pricing in the 1700s and maybe what you can expect moving forward as we get into the grand solar minimum and we're starting to see crop losses in the exact same places that we saw that started the French Revolution. And please remember to visit one of the sponsors for today's video, My Patriot Supply, long-term food storage. Remember, every purchase through My Patriot Supply helps keep ADAPT 2030 on air. Going to start you over here with the northern hemisphere temperatures. This is off the Greenland Ice Core data set, the GISP, the Greenland Ice Survey Project that the IPCC loves to tell you that global temperatures are warmer than ever. And what do you notice about that spike right there at the beginning of the construction of the Notre Dame Cathedral? Agriculture was at a high point. There was an abundance of food, so people could focus on other things, creating art, music, architecture, not worried about the day-to-day -day struggles of just staying alive as in the dark ages when they had a very difficult time growing food. Take a look at the sacred geometry inside Notre Dame as well, working on the Fibonacci sequence and other numerology if you're into that. So again, when there was more time to focus on other things than just filling your belly to stay alive, obviously more creativity was happening during these times. But then we're going to fast forward. Drought in the French Revolution, the effects of adverse weather conditions on peasant revolts, 1789. Now the full-on crop failure in 1788 and then the subsequent cold was what they said sparked the revolution. They didn't really talk about the oppression of the serfs at the time, but I'm sure that had something to do with it quite a bit. But when they were hungry, they were downtrodden. That's not a very uh, nice mix for the rulers, and we're starting to see the same thing again. Wherever you look across the planet, it seems to be some sort of upheaval. Now, this is an incredibly interesting proxy here. The Peasant Revolt from July and August 1799. The stars are where the riots and the revolts actually started. These are the, some of the same areas that are being wiped out with the vineyards and the hailstorms and the wheat production losses over the last two years. Matchup in history is startling and a little bit spooky on the left side map. But when we transit over to the right side, harvest failure. What those numbers represent are the percentages below the normal for moisture content, or literally how much less rain was there. So some places were only receiving half their rainfall. Remember back then they didn't have the irrigation systems we do today. There was no just-in-time delivery. If your crops failed there, they failed and you starved. You couldn't buy it, bring it in from somewhere else. And also, the water flow and the modern agriculture techniques we have blows anything away that they had during that time. Now with that said, this is the most important chart of the video here. The food price increases in bad harvest years. We saw something similar to this in Germany, but here we are. Food prices increased 3x. So you can see from 1786, it was a very quick tripling of prices over three years. So I'm laying it out right here in this graph for you. I feel that 2019 is the beginning year. Let's just switch this with say 1786. Over the next five years, our food prices are absolutely going to increase. With the crop losses, with the extreme weather we have, with the intensification of the grand solar minimum, whether some solar physicists believe it or not, if it really is culminating or not culminating, the weather signs are all around us that we are losing crops. And this is it. What happens in five years if food prices are triple? I think our global economy will stay intact Absolutely not. This is one of the things that accompanies a grand solar minimum. Population reduction, contraction in the economy, and population migration. So since Europe's pretty close, you know, we're already taking a look here at areas of concern, extreme weather events, Morocco drought, where we look over toward Tunisia and parts of Algeria, rainfall surplus, that would explain the record snows across Algeria for the last two years. And then jumping over to uh, ag players, Morocco lack of adequate rainfall. So the crop development impaired significantly. 
But then what I really like is the diametric opposite information flowing through the media. For example, look at this one. EU grain harvest 2019-20 forecast to exceed 311 million tons for only the fourth time on record a significant turnaround following the drought affected areas of 2018-19. Yet in the very next set of tweets here, Northern Europe continues to look dry over the coming weeks. Concerns grow for crops, particularly those on lighter land. There's a significant cover-up going on in terms of trying to keep you thinking everything is stable. Nothing's changing. It won't change. It's been like this always. It's going to continue like this. So when you start to see these diametrically opposite headlines, you really need to mark this in time. Take a look at these. And then follow forward, and then if it doesn't come out, as soon as you ask what happened, they'll say, oh, I'm sorry, it was, it was a forecast. Things could change, but the rosy forecast. Also, Ethiopian wheat production, 2019-20, reaching 4.6 million metric tons on increased natural rainfall in Northern Africa, which accompanies multi-millennia shifts in climate, not 400-year shifts, literally 2,000, 3,600-year shifts, 7,200-year shifts, we're back in it again. Government's pushing. Wheat self-sufficient. They got the rainfall now. They can surely do it. And take a look at the Ukraine, the bread basket of Central Europe. Wheat down 8% in production. But corn up 22%. And again, this follows right on the heel with the Global Wheat Report. Ukraine Agriculture Ministry reporting that the spring wheat has been sown up to 89% of the final forecast. So again, they're falling short on what was forecast there. Then the Russian agricultural consultancy says that Russia could, could increase its production this year, but the extreme weather that's happening right now in the Ural Mountains is definitely going to put a dent into that. And I'll bring you to that last paragraph there. According to Reuters, Germany's Association of Farmer Cooperatives expect 2019 winter wheat to increase 21%. Did you see my eyes roll on the back of my head? An increase of 21%. Really? Where is that going to come from? That much land cannot be allocated to increase. I understand. Are they sure they're going out of the drought or is it just an alleviation during the springtime? Nobody's sure. Follow the last three to four years. It's going to dry out as soon as it gets toward later spring. If it follows the pattern over the last four years, they're going to go right back into the drought. But it looks good for the headlines to assure the markets. Again, it's always about assuring everybody right now that everything's stable, that nothing will change. And this is when you should notice that it's really gonna change when they're saying it's not gonna change. You need to be looking behind you and say, whoa, 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 I need to look 180 degrees to what everything is being told to us now. Stability is the headline of the day. You should be looking the other direction to see really what's coming. And take a look through some of these headlines here. South Africa's corn imports, 125 million metric tons, that's because they can't grow any corn down there because of the farms that have been confiscated. So all those imports, South Africa used to export. Now they're importing. That's a complete flip. Haiti wheat imports rise 5%. Okay, it's a small country. It's not going to really push the global markets. Russia's wheat export slowdown, that's been the name of the game for the last, I don't know, several months of headlines. Russia's not going to export the wheat. So even if they grow extra, they're not exporting it. So who cares if they increase 3 million tons? It's staying in Russia. Here's a good one. Chinese demand to push Myanmar corn exports higher. So the African swine fever running amok in China. Myanmar used to be the breadbasket of Asia. I wonder if China's going to help China bring more of their agriculture online. But anywhere you look, China's scarfing up any type of extra supply across the planet. Sichuan province, pig output slows 6%. And here, Morocco's wheat output to fall 44%. That goes right back to that stress chart. And I'll leave you with a double shelf cloud, plasma display, otherwise known as pink lightning, Central Europe as well. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. If you're looking for more information on the Grand Solar Minimum, 30 minutes on the go, many Ice Age conversations anywhere, podcasts are hosted across the net, as well as trueleafmarket.com, heirloom and organic seeds for any grow zone on the planet. It is springtime. You should be experimenting with what you can grow or sprout. It's going to be an essential skill set moving forward into the Grand Solar Minimum. And I will see you next video.